Good day fellow investors, welcome to the value investing channel where we look for low risk, high reward investments with a margin of safety. Such an investment is CorePoint Logic, which is the largest position of Dr. Michael Burry, the famous investor that was represented in the movie The Big Short. So he shorted the housing market and now he is long hotels in the United States. In this video, I will show you my analysis of CorePoint Logic and why I think he is long, what kind of defensive investment it is. Let's start. So the content, introduction, the business analysis, the cash flow calculations, what return to expect, selling properties to unlock value, what are what is the, the actual value of the properties beyond the counting numbers, stock capitalists already there, expected to materialize in 2019, 20, 2020, the risks and the investment st strategy. As I said, from the big short, Michael Burry, so he has disclosed his positions as his fund, Xion Capital Management, went above 100 million in assets under management. And we have seen this and some other positions that are mostly land value based and probably core point logic is in the same positions. Core point logic is a real estate investment trust, REIT, owning hotels that belong to the La Quinta brand. It's a spin-off for from the La Quinta company that merged with Windham and the stock hasn't been doing well since then. So it's down, what, 60% since the spin-off. That's normal for spin-offs as they're usually unloved, misunderstood and underfollowed. So let's see why did Michael Burry buy the stock. So since his exposure got disclosed, the stock picked up a little bit, but then quarterly earnings came in that had an impairment of 150 million. Nobody liked it very much and the stock dropped again to the current levels, dropped to 10 and now it's a little bit higher, but okay. Let's see whether this is a value investing, a good value investing opportunity, or at least why is Michael owning it? The business analysis. The hospitality industry is a complex one where it all goes around room values, revenue per available room, occupancy, etc. But at the end, what makes things simple is, okay, tell me what are the cash flows for investors, which within a REIT usually show up as dividends or as buybacks if there are some asset sales and similar. So with the company, uh, they have 40,000 rooms, market capitalization of 665 million, debt of 1 billion. So when we add, add everything up, the market is valuing a room of the company at 40,000, $41,000. Daily rates for the room are $90. Revenue per available room is 59 due to the occupancy of 66%. Similar REITs, a little bit more expensive, luxury, Chatham Lodging Trust has a market cap of 900 million with 585 million in debt. Revenue per available room is 134, so double CPLGs, but it has only 6,000 rooms. The value per room for Chatham on a double revenue per available room is 250,000. So you see the discrepancy in value. Apple Hospitality REIT, has a market cap of 3.65 billion, debt of 1.4 billion and 30,000 rooms. The value per room is 166,000, revenue per available room is 105. So the decline isn't that big on the lower revenue per available room. So we might think, okay, CPLG's rooms are worth more than 40,000, probably perhaps if you put it into a perspective, 60, 80,000. However, it all boils down to funds from operations. Apple's is 400 million, Chatham's 130 million with a bit more of debt. So the 900 million market cap, 165 million for CPLG, where the market cap is 665 million. From that perspective, also CPLG is cheap. When it comes to hotels, also you want high EBITDA margins, which give you more safety. Apple has very high EBITDA margins, 37% compared to the rest. CPLG has much lower EBITDA margins, but you have to segment the portfolio. 
there is the core portfolio with 35% EBITDA margin, very high, but that's just a small percent, but it makes almost half of the EBITDA. Other core portfolio has a much lower margin, so there are room. there is room for improvement, 50% of EBITDA. Non-core, 76 hotels have just an EBITDA margin of 8%. The company will either transform them or sell them where there might be value unlocking because it really skews the number, makes the average look much worse than it actually is because it doesn't contribute to EBITDA, the non-core hotels, but it lowers the averages and the available cash flows. And if there is a recession, these non-core hotels would probably lead to significant losses. The guidance for 2019 is flat, 180 million in EBITDA, 8 to 9 percent of revenue goes for capital expenditures, they have 1 billion in debt, 2.5 percent plus LIBOR, so let's me, let me round it up to 60 million in interest payments. So the available cash flows for investors is 43 million on a market cap of 700 million is a return of 6.1 percent, which is in line with the dividend yield or just below it. The buybacks of another 50 million make this look like an attractive investment, but this is not a business yielding 15% as the company without asset sales will not have an extra 50 million a year to do buybacks. However, value can be unlocked by selling the properties. The asset value is supposed to be 2.4 billion according to HVS and this is also on the books given the current market capitalization there you already have a discount of 50%, which is, might be one reason why Michael Burry is buying. You are practically buying hotels across America with a 50% discount. Book value of assets, 2.4 billion, debt, 1 billion. Thus, the value is 1.4 billion, market cap, just 700 million. I went to look at the list of what they own and what they could sell and found the following. There are many hotels with extremely big differences in book value. So on top of the discount of 50%, there might be more hidden value. For example, their whole hotel in Sheboygan is valued at 828,000 and it was built in 1975, refurbished in 1996 for the last time. However, with 73 rooms with a starting price of $75 per room, I find it hard to believe the value is only 800,000 that would be just 11,000 per room. So if they sell this lot, they might get more than 800,000. And I have found a similar lot much further from the highway. This is really on the highway in Sheboygan selling for 800,000. So probably the value and what Michael Burry is looking is that the value of the underlying assets is much higher than what is on the books, what they spent for this. Or if I go to Salt Lake City, they own three hotels there where the book value goes from 2.5 million to 8.4 million on a similar room number, 100 to 122 rooms for the hotels. And the price of the rooms is also there from what, $100 to 120, 130. I have in euros because I did do the research from Europe. One of the hotels was built in 1997 one, while the other two are 20 years older, therefore probably the higher value of the newer hotel, but the land next to the Salt Lake City airport must be value, valued more than probably 2.4 million, etc. So if the management now has free hands to dispose of the assets that are incorrectly priced or not yielding enough as a hotel, but might be more valuable, especially in Texas, as something else, then over the next three, five years, we might see a lot of value unlocking, a lot of cash flows from asset sales that would lead to more buybacks, more value, better investments, better capital allocation. And this is another reason why I think Michael Burry is investing. Plus, there are already some catalysts there. As we said, portfolio transformation is one, asset management initiatives, so proactive, changing the values of the hotels, unlocking the values of the land of something. And then La Quinta merged with Witham that now goes from a loyalty customer base from 15 million to 60 million, which might lead more customers to La Quinta hotels, higher revenues for CorePoint Logic.
and there might be also always consolidation but i don't know how much value will that add because it's usually done with leverage if they improve revenues by just 20 30 50 million so just say six seven percent over the next year let's say ebitda goes up 20 30 million that improves cash flows by 20 million that's a 50 percent increase in free cash flows 50 percent increase in dividend and there you would see immediately a stock price shoot up by at least 50 to 100 percent given the book value there is a margin of safety plus as a normal spin-off there was just one analyst covering the stock at the last conference call so it's really shunned by investors those who got the spin-off stock usually don't know what to do with it and when they see the stock price go down they sell it sell it sell it get rid of this let me stick to la quinta which was what i was owning in the first place so typical normal spin-off behavior probably we have reached the bottom as the value of the hotels provides a margin of safety however there are also some risks the main risk for cplg is an economic slowdown rest, less travel less business would lead to lower revenue and lower cash flows however higher margins offer some kind of resilience in case of recessions but they need to get rid of the non-core hotels first i managed to find la quinta's annual report and in their risk description they tell how, they tell you how revenues declined 17 percent in 2009 and EBITDA 30%, 17% decline in revenue for core point, which is a little bit different in the business model as they own the hotels, would erase the EBITDA and make it not profitable, probably lead to a div dividend cut, which is the biggest risk, but they might survive or barely survive without fire sales, etc. So you never know when a recession is going to come However, if they stick to the core high EBITDA, high EBITDA margin hotels, they might easily survive the next recession. And then you have a company that provides stable cash flow, stable dividends, current at 6-7%, which is okay. Something the investment community might have missed is the government shutdown that will certainly impact hotel revenue when they, those disclose their revenues for Q1 2019. To January probably four to five percent less attendance in hotels lower prices that might lead to negative surprises when we see the results coming this or next month so as for the investment strategy if I look at purely the cash flows now they are yielding seven percent if the management manages to restructure the company they will yield ten percent which is a great improvement and the stock price would really explode on that. Then there is the unlocked asset values, which I think Michael Burry is betting on. So when I combine all these three ratios, I think there is a margin of safety, not in the form of the stock won't go lower. The stock can always go lower, especially if there is a recession, but in the form, I will not lose my capital permanently. So as a value investor, understanding Michael Burry, he's now on the defensive in the late part of the economic cycle. So he looks for value that will weather the cycle and give a yield in the meantime as the cycle evolves. So if you're looking for a defensive play that can go lower in stock price, but not that much in value, then core point lodging should be your uh, investment or should see your portfolio exposed to it. For me, I'm looking for a 15% return on investment from the business so seven percent is a little bit low now even if it goes to ten percent from a REIT I am going to put this on my watch list cover the stock look how it develops how the economy goes and then if there is a recession then I will look at buying it or really compare it to all the other companies on my watch list which is now already at 2020 something so I have a lot of stocks to choose and this is simply not that good as others because the current business yield and the future potential is not at 15 percent however i understand michael Burry's defensive approach to this which leads me to believe okay he's happy with seven to ten percent plus the additional bonuses from the asset sales which makes this a really good investment not amazing it's a boring investment it's a boring industry mid-scale upper mid-scale hotels so select service nothing special the hotels that don't look amazing but stable nice and steady and this is what core point logic is
see how this fits your portfolio. Thank you for watching. Tomorrow I'll discuss another potential value investment that a lot of value investments talk about is Tory Industries. On Friday we'll make the news about where we are now in the cycle. As Howard Mark said, we cannot predict the future, but we can see where we are in the cycle now in relation to a few stocks. We'll make a few examples. Uh, over the weekend Qualcomm and then Monday we'll continue with our Buffett letters to shareholders with a lot to learn from Buffett. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.